it's so nice to have all of you here today. The program is to get a better understanding of the undergrounding system and the undergrounding project that is currently underway in Palm Beach. And the way we thought we would do that is we would invite three panelists who understand the most about undergrounding in our community to come and speak with us and then to open it up for your questions. So I'm going to ask Mr. Bradford to come and join us. So this morning what you're going to hear from us is a little bit of history. You're going to hear about our neighborhood initiatives that we've had going on for many years, the project benefits, the costs and the method of payment, the safeguards, the upcoming referendum, the design implementation, construction plan, and then, of course, your questions that we will attempt to answer. What's important to know about all of that is that we will get a 25% discount if we do the entire town or sections of town not less than three pole miles of overhead utility lines. And next, I'm going to let Jeff Smith come up here and tell you a lot of the details about cost. The cost of the project is not to exceed $90 million. Um, and the way we are going to pay for that is uh, general obligation bonds with a special tax assessment. The average cost would be $550 per parcel over a 30-year period. By doing a general obligation bond, it is required that this goes to a referendum to the town voters. So the referendum, election day will be Tuesday, March 15th, 2016. There will be absent ballots available by January 29th for the military and anyone overseas. And by on February 16th, uh, domestic ballots will be available. Early voting will begin on Saturday, March 5th, and extend to Saturday, March 12th. And there'll be 13 locations countywide to vote. I'm Paul Brazil, I'm the Director of Public Works. Uh, the question I'm gonna answer is how are we gonna build this? So let's start with what are we building? What we've got to do is get a series of conduits underneath the road. Right now, the utilities are all overhead, typically in the backyard. We want to move them to out in front of the properties in the roadway. Directional bore is a method of you, you drill a hole, the drill comes out the other side, and you grab a hold of the conduit and you pull it back in. It really minimizes the impact to the roadway. When we do that, it, if there are no other utilities in the easement, we'll be able to abandon those easements in the rear yard, which will be an, uh, truly advantageous for the property owners. Right now, the plan is to start at the very north end of the island and the very south end of the island. Then, while that construction's underway, we've got to start designing the second phase. Second phase will be an extension of the first year's construction, and at some point, we're going to have to attack Midtown. The goal is six years, which is very aggressive. Ten years is a reasonable schedule, minimizing impacts but balancing time um, and cost versus overall impact to any given neighborhood. In a typical residential neighborhood, um, say North End, any east-west street, it's going to take about one transformer um, per four households. So I'm going to need an easement from about one out of, out of every four people. The transformers are about how big, Tom? Uh, three by four. Three by four, and you've seen them in communities. You can drive on Everglade um, Island. It's a great example. We, that was recently undergrounded. They would have to get an easement for the alley or they'd have to move it to the front and then directional bore underneath on the side of your house to connect. So they, they'll have to trench from the back to the Not front. trench, they'll, they'll do a directional bore. I mean, it'll be under, the, I oh. mean, you can actually bore underneath a swimming pool. And the another thing to remember is those places such as Everglades Island um, that have already paid for and have, un they're not, you don't get charged twice. You will be left out of the, the assessment program because you've already paid. I thought it was extremely educational and informative and encouraging. A lot of uh, very clear answers were given. Um, it's going to be a long and complex project, but it's so important for our town. Well, I thought it was informative. I'm still not sure of the situation as to what this is going to cost. I'm excited about it. I live in a condo. I've been through the hurricanes. I've been without electricity for three weeks. The last time we had a, uh, a Category 2 hurricane. And I think it'll be very good. 
Well, I'm a realtor on the island and a resident, and I do completely believe that it will improve our property values just because of the aesthetics, number one. And I, and I sincerely believe that it will also help our reliability. I'm, I'm concerned about the details of implementation and financing that. What do you foresee the problems for the referendum in Palm Beach? I, I know in the areas they've already done it, they had an 80% approval rating. And I think that's a pretty good um, temperature of the town. Do you think the referendum will pass in Palm Beach? I really do. I think this town is all about aesthetics. And how can we even consider hardening these lines? It just makes absolutely no sense. Um, I, I don't think it will be an issue at all.